Coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. Where are study teams? Like, are they behind their desk? Um, what tools can they use on the go? And this seamless handoffs. Um, there is there is also many opportunities to work on collaboration within team, but also within sites, among sites and sponsors. It's the way it's been done, but it's not the way it has to be done. And so we're trying to challenge some of those assumptions as well where we can to get them to think outside of the box in some way and realize that you're actually in the box uh, and can check the box as well too. So you don't need to be afraid of it. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking the question, how can technology transform site operations and participant experience in clinical research? In today's rapidly changing clinical research environment, technology isn't just a bonus. It's making a real impact on every phase of research from enhancing participant engagement to streamlining study team workflows and supporting decentralized trial operations, it appears that this digital revolution is here to stay. In this X-Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with the two co-founders of Study Pages, Kuhn de Lombard and Aaron Villarreal, to learn more about the technological innovations and strategies that are redefining clinical trial design and execution. Our discussion also explored the role of AI and automation in enhancing recruitment and operational processes, while also addressing the regulatory and compliance challenges that come with new digital solutions. Thank you, Kuhn and Aaron, for taking the time in the Spotlight interview. Well, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. So to start us off, how can digital tools enhance the patient experience before, during, and after a trial? I think there is a, a plenty of opportunity and still a long way to go uh, to really make a research uh, almost like a consumer experience, right? Like at the same level as expecting when you order something on Amazon or book a room at Airbnb, um, participants should be able to figure out or find trial information, um, self-refer if need be, or maybe refer through through a physician. And then from there on, it should be one continuous and smooth, uh, trend, you know, um, set of uh, uh, steps with notifications, if data collection is needed, um, study visit schedules, and all these uh, kind of type of things you would expect in a modern experience. Research is already complex enough as it is just what you know what's being studied or what's required, and so anything that can be done to make that process. Uh, more intuitive, more more engaging, easier to understand is uh, is important. And with the uh, rise of more and more technologies to 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 do this, uh, that technology burden also starts to play a part in in making the process more challenging. You know, not everyone is uh, also you know used to using technology in these ways as well. Uh, and so just how do we introduce all of that in a way that's easy for teams to use and easy for potential participants or actual study participants themselves to use is uh, something we spend a lot of time uh, trying to, to work on. And what does the future of automation in clinical trial operations look like? I think the, the future looks like a very connected experience where uh, you... As a as a study participant, you can really work uh, alongside uh, the study team, uh, getting notifications, getting alerts, um, being able to collect data passively uh, from different devices, uh, not always having to come in to an office to participate in a more decentralized uh, type of participation. Um, and I think just just different ways of engaging with people in the research process and, and also maybe keep being able to redefine a little bit what is clinical trial participation and um, how much active uh, energy is required as much as just sort of being more of a passive activity that is is 
opting into sharing your data that's collected over time uh, without you needing to be so much directly involved um, or even the sharing of your medical history or your data for that purpose as well. So uh, I think a lot of exciting ways that the research can go, uh, but all of that, again, uh, takes it still figuring out how to make it, it keep it and, and make it a very coordinated uh, activity uh, is going to be a challenge, but also a huge opportunity. It's super important to think about workflows. Um, currently, trials um, use a wide variety of, of, of tools um, for data collection, for safety, for uh, and so on and so on. And um, it, it's the, the workflow on how these things all fit together is not necessarily well thought through. So we, we really hope and we, we'd like to contribute to streamlining this, uh, thinking about intelligent workflows and um, really simplifying the trials, not only for uh, the study teams, but also for the participants. And I think once you have a, a collection of tools uh, that are well-coordinated, well, well put together, then we can start thinking about using AI as well to fill in the gaps, um, to catch errors, uh, to maybe um, explain things in, in plain language to participants. Uh, there, there are so many uh, opportunities, but we believe that workflows come first and then we can start building on a uh, better trial experience. Now, could you tell us how digital solutions can ease burdens for study teams? To expand on, on what I said earlier is, is really thinking not only workflows, but also where are study teams? Like, are they behind their desk? Um, what tools can they use on the go? And this seamless handoffs. Um, there is there's also many opportunities to work on collaboration within team, but also within sites among sites and sponsors. We see a lot of um, uh, opportunity there where better communication um, and more integrated tools can really bring um, or, or ease the burden uh, for, for teams. I agree totally. And, and I, I think it's only going to get worse before it gets better in some way, because if if you're not understanding what are the the challenges that are happening as you introduce more technology and more and more workflows, uh, a lot of information silos get made, and being able to come up with strategies on how to counteract those uh, also becomes ju just another um, uh, another thing that teams need to work through, and they don't always have the right tools uh, or process uh, available to. Um, to work on those. So yeah, what can be automated? What, what is not automatable? Uh, I think are, are definitely, um, things that, that study pages is, is focused on always looking at with our teams. Uh, and, um, you know, even changing regulation as well too, obviously comes, comes into play, uh, when considering all of this is like, well, what, are we allowed to do is sort of this this frame that you work within uh and and sometimes we're we're even noticing that there's misinterpretations or or overly complicated interpretations of some of this this regulatory and compliance part as well so some burden that uh sites are continually and study teams are continually dealing with are not necessarily like it's the way it's been done, but it's not the way it has to be done. And so we're trying to challenge some of those assumptions as well where we can to get them to think outside of the box in some way and realize that you're actually in the box uh, and can check the box as well, too. So you don't need to be afraid of it. Aaron, you mentioned decentralized trials. Could you discuss the strategies that can support the effective implementation of fully decentralized trials? Really interesting topic of, well, how do you take something that we've been used to doing in one way and, and kind of break it apart uh, in some ways and still get the same result or hopefully better uh, out of it. Uh, so many processes are built around having someone come into a site 
uh, and that that whole experience. Um, a lot of the service providers that exist out there have have done that. So uh, when we take away the site uh, and we are focused just on the interactions between a study team and the participants, uh, technology again, uh, obviously it's it's a tool we think is is valuable in in. Uh, being able to provide a consistent and context heavy experience for participants, um, being able to to be always available and be a resource. If, if you're not face to face, being able to know where to go when you have a question, when you need help, when you need uh, to reach the study team is critical. Uh, and that's where we are really looking at like an app type of an experience uh, so that people can be feel connected to the study team wherever they are at any time. Uh, it'll help in-person trials and it's it's going to be ever more critical uh, when looking at decentralized. And I think also workflows and being able to practice like uh, uh, the um, procedures and things that you're doing can all of the study team be able to um, walk through that and role play as a participant uh, and really understand the interactions uh, between all the different elements that the trial is is doing? And so uh, I think that that also is, is a huge challenge. But again, always we talk about it in the opportunity that um, technology can provide ways to connect but it also requires you to be able to try it out. Uh, and how do you do that in a way that everyone feels comfortable with? Because the more comfortable the study team is with all the components used in a decentralized trial, I think the participants uh, will feel that. Yeah, I mean, and we have um, a firsthand experience uh, about that. Um, we uh, publication uh, two uh, of a decentralized trial and what we saw there um, First of all, a social media campaign was combined with our with our platform uh, with huge success, enrolling nine, 94 participants in just 12 days. Devices were sent um, to track uh, cardiovascular health, blood pressure monitor, uh, EKG, and what we saw is that our that what is what was really critical in the success of that is the many communication options uh, between participants and study teams uh, as Aaron mentioned earlier like filling that gap because there's no person to help them set up or you know the the the, the data collection app or use the device so there's all these questions that pop up you know uh, answering those promptly um keeping track of progress is really key on making decentralized trials uh, really work um also uh, going on on uh, Aaron's point there um Finding or testing the devices in the real world is also a uh, huge uh, importance and see if they work well together. And to wrap up, could you also share what approaches help ensure compliance with data privacy and security standards in study management? Being compliant uh, requires understanding what, uh, what regulations are out there uh, and how uh, much of that responsibility falls on an individual site or study team, uh, or uh, how much of that can be taken on by the uh, by the technology platform. So, in in the case of of study pages, we uh, are HIPAA compliant. There are Part 11, uh, 21 CFR Part 11 compliance requirements for certain studies that that can come into play. Um, there's GDPR when we're we're going more international uh, studies and and multi sites. So um, the important part is is choosing a provider, of course, that understands those needs and has been doing it for a long time, um, and uh, trying to have as much of that compliance fall on the platform first as a solid foundation to build upon, and then have compliant processes and things that exist on top of it. Uh, is uh, a strategy that we've seen be successful uh, in the past. And um, we're, we're definitely uh, happy, uh, been happy to support uh, those teams in uh, being able to take on a more technology forward process for some of the things that they were traditionally doing on pen and paper. 
uh, and be able to have them uh, cross that bridge and still be compliant, but also, uh, like we were talking about earlier, understand that compliance doesn't necessarily the, the regulations don't necessarily say how you do it. They're they're giving you an idea of what you need to meet, uh, but how you meet that and demonstrate that there's a lot more flexibility that exists there. Uh, but it does require having a nimble uh, process and flexible, uh, configurable software to be able to help you do that. And uh, that's where we spend a lot of time uh, making sure that. Uh, the platform can have a consistent user experience, but still be configurable and feel like yours. Uh, and, and and that's, I think, the recipe for success that we're aiming for. Also, the the um, trials are getting ever more complex, um, making it harder to stay to stay compliant as well. So thinking through uh, and about how technology can prevent errors from happening in the first place. For example, making sure that when a reconsenting is needed, that the right version, only the right version can be signed. Or when errors is happening, that notifications pop up or before errors are even happening. And that's really thinking through these things. Um, the cognitive uh, load on, on, on study staff, on site staff is already uh, you know, very high. Um, running multiple protocols at the same time. And, and, and it, it is not linear. Uh, it, it just scales um, in, and almost snowballs into a whole set of tasks and things that need to happen to successfully do it. Um, and that's really where technology can shine and, and do better than, than, than humans. So we or, or the coordinators can focus on the participants instead of having to check a bunch of boxes and and, and, and and tasks and administrative tasks and adding to the burden. So that's kind of how we see compliance as well. Well, thank you very much, Aaron and Kuhn, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Thank you so much for having us. It was really great to be here. Thank you so much for having us. We look forward to learning more about Study Pages initiatives to advance the use of technology for clinical research. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.